Well, I loved the show or what I've seen of it so far, which I'm really pleased to say because Joe Joe Barton is someone who's been on my podcast to talk about football, so I can go back to him and tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed, really liked it. Um, but I'm gonna I, I, I'll begin with you, Charlie. I mean, one of these kind of complex science fiction narratives that has so many kind of elements to it. But when a friend or a family member asks you what this show is about, have you nailed down a kind of short go-to description yet? No, absolutely not. I sort of make it up every time and um, cater to whoever is talking to me. I think that um, there's lots of, I think because the show is so many things, you can sort of describe it lots of different ways. But I guess the most coherent way would be it's a action thriller, time travel experience sent, grounded by... Um, love relationships and people trying to live normally within an extraordinary circumstance mm. it's pretty good that was pretty good uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, angeli i was going to ask too but i mean i wanted to i sort of mentioned at the start maybe i'm biased because i get on really well with joe but it, it's a it is a great script when you get a show that is a kind of that creates a whole new world of kind of whole new set of rules it, 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 it does become a real writer's medium a kind of show this is it's something where the writer comes out of their wonderfully created brain uh can you just talk to me a little bit about when you first got that script and and what what sort of future and, and how talented a writer that joe joe is at the moment um so i should probably start by saying i absolutely loved his uh show giri haji i devoured that and um fangirled him on Twitter and was asking him loads of questions. I think he said something about, this was a few years ago, he said something about releasing the script for the dance sequence on the roof. And I was like, yes, please do it. I really want to read it with like no filter whatsoever. Uh, and then when the audition for this came through, I remember being like, it's by Joe Barton. It's going to be incredible. And I just had to remove myself from Twitter in fear I would say something a little too sycophantic <laughs> and, uh, and talk myself out of the job. But I know you're supposed to say this when you talk about the scripts that you've read for jobs that you've done, but I, I devoured these scripts. They were just so brilliant as a viewer, more, more so than someone wanting to be involved as an actor, just couldn't get enough of them. And all of the characters just sprung off the page. Um, and the bigger, heavier questions that the show poses were things that really stuck with me for a while. So yeah, I, I just knew I really wanted to be a part of this one. Yeah, Rudy, was, was Joe around at all to discuss this with? Because when someone does create a world out of their mind, is, it, it, I imagine it must be quite helpful to have them around to ask questions too, or, or was that was that not an option on this occasion? I mean, Joe wasn't around a huge amount. Um, however, I think that I, I don't really think that it was necessarily uh, imperative for the, uh, I suppose, for the, 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 you know, the success of the you know, the shoot really for him to be around simply because I think that the script was so um, vivid and clear and and imaginative. And I think that all those, like what Angela was saying, I think all of those, these really wonderful, unique characters just kind of jumped out from the page. And I think that's the testament to the writing, really. I think when you ever, whenever you read any script, it's sort of like, as an actor, it's sort of effortless. You know, and 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 the lines kind of um, it, it's very. I I find personally, I I find it sort of um, very easy to learn. You know, the words are very easy to say because actually it's grounded in in a sense of naturalism and and I think it's a real skill. I mean, I I'm, I'm not a writer at all, but I think it's incredible when you read a script and and those words just feel feel sort of natural and coherent and mm. and they're easy to sort of embed within you. I think. When it, when it becomes difficult to learn. There's something sort of jarring, isn't there? I think there's something sort of not quite right. Um, but Joe's writing was, um, it was sort of very, um, yeah, very vivid. Mm. I always look for um, different football things he puts in there. So I know there's a character called Ericsson in this, isn't there? <laughs> Which is another Spurs, but he always tries to get a, a name in there. So I'll watch, <laughs> watch you with one of those, with that uh, perspective on. But um, Charlie, I'll come to you next. Um, when I watch anything to do with kind of time travel, I, I'm one of those people that often has to kind of pause the telly and just stop for a second and just try and make sense of things and work stuff out in my head. Did you ever have to do that when reading the scripts or is it just a reflection of me? Am I just a bit slow? No, 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 no. Um, that's uh, constantly. I also the script changed quite a lot as we were shooting it. So you'd get sort of attached to one storyline, and then 
something else would happen and you'd have to sort of like remember you'd have to sort of rewrite the history that you'd created about the show for yourself um and it was fascinating to read it particularly I think I had an interesting perspective reading the script because I'm um my character's journey is quite different to um these guys and so I got to read this sort of like insane thing and not at all be able to visualize what was going on so now I'm really excited to see the show and exactly how how everything does piece together because reading it felt like how are they going to pull this off and they have yeah Angela did you get you mentioned about getting the scripts before did you get them all in one sitting then at the start or did you get them as they were shooting were there lots of amendments and that can, can that be quite tricky for actors to to kind of have to to learn it as they go or, or was it quite did it stick to how it kind of was right from 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 day one um more or less so I got the first two scripts in the summer of 2020 and then we didn't actually start shooting until January 21 so I think in the time that had passed there were some shifts that had happened to the scripts and they're of course always uh, amendments but nothing too seismic uh in terms of massive short uh, story gear shifts um but yeah the, the the last four episodes I sort of got later in the day and it's always mad because when you're filming something you often don't know how it ends uh or you have to sort of pack in your story with lo your character with lots of backstory but a lot Joe's been incredible at letting each character have their moment to be fully realized um, so a lot of the backstories of all the characters are in there as well, which is great. Is that a bit of a joy these days with sort of TV? There's so much great characters and so much great TV at the moment, because you, I guess you have more time to explore a character than you might on a, on a movie. Yeah, for sure. I guess like you've got 90 minutes or 120 minutes usually, whereas with this, I think we have almost eight hours. Um, so, yeah, you can pack a lot more detail in. And Rudy, I mean, but I'm just sort of, I'm just choosing random people to ask these questions too. So I'm just, if anyone wants to sort of just uh, step in and, and take it, that's fine because it's hard on Zoom because otherwise people talk over each other. But when, uh, so but I'll ask this one to you, Rudy. But when you're working on a on a on a sci-fi where things are surreal and fantastical and not quite as we know it, do you still take the exact same approach to the role at hand as you would in say a realistic drama? Is it always the kind of same process for you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, it's always the same process and it always starts whether it's sci-fi, whether it's um, a mental health drama, whether it's a domestic drama, whether it's a comedy, whatever. It, for, for me, it's all, it always starts from sort of um, in here and, and in here as a sort of, you know, developing a, a psychological makeup and a, a sort of mental framework of the character and, and, and letting everything else take care of itself. So, I mean, one thing that we talked about with regards to Shiv quite early on with myself and, and, and the creative team was, we wanted we wanted a sense of um, uh, trauma etched in Shiv's eyes um, through the show um, to sort of sh be indicative of the, the the experiences that he's had to live throughout his experience of the you know as part of the Lazarus project. So um, how you do that? How you as an actor? How you portray trauma just just by sort of um you know through 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 your eyes is 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 difficult but I suppose you just I mean I I just started with imagination you know the, the sort of basics of, of acting and trying to create a, a mental framework and and, a, and and years of experience and what that sort of means to him and what that what he can see and hopefully the rest of that if you sort of internalize all that then externally it sort of manifests itself quite organically and naturally and Charlie, I was going to I'll come to you next. Are you quite pragmatic when it comes to sort of out there things like some of the stuff explored in sci-fi of this nature? Are you quite open-minded to the concept of the, let's say, abnormal when it comes to things like time travel and, and what have you? Oh, massively open-minded. I love. I am a real. I love sci-fi and I love um, things that are slightly other and bizarre. And I think high concept is so exciting and cool. And I think that um, that I, I was so ex I, I was thrilled at the opportunity to be part of something um, that was so high concept, particularly because I think it's um, it's high concept, but in a really low-fi way almost. I guess like there's so many like domestic viewpoints in it. Um, it's a really interesting way to show the end of the world many times because you root for different people and it's quite grounded in people just trying to um, carry on. And I think that's really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a big fan of all this kind of thing. And um, I'm also like a very gullible person. So um, 
if this if somebody was to tell me this was probably happening in real life I would absolutely go along with it so I'm very glad that I'm in it rather than watching it. <laughs> and Lee, but the, did you I mean the characters really believe in the no notion of altruism I mean is that something that you share or is that something that rubbed off on you in real life by playing a character that has that quite that that, that perspective on an outlook on life? Well it certainly got me thinking because I I believe that I, I guess I hadn't really interrogated the idea too deeply so I thought in my head I think most people can can at least commit a few actions a day that are purely altruistic but of course there's a self-satisfaction element involved in absolutely anything and therefore nothing is completely pure um but yeah what, what I think is really interesting for Archie is I think she is the poster wants to be the poster girl for altruism which is why she has been on a, a mission in her career to try and find an organization like the Lazarus Project who are as purely altruistic as possible um, but I think her own uh, sort of conviction in that possibility is shaken by the arrival and the actions of George um, so yeah I think that will make people think more about that. <laughs> And Rudy, we'll get on to Papa in a minute, but I did just want to ask about Caroline, Caroline Quentin, because obviously someone that's just been sort of on our TV screens for such a long time. How is it like to sort of collaborate with, uh, collaborate with someone like that on a project like this? Yeah, I mean, she's great. She's lovely. She's, I mean, I grew up watching her, you know, as a teenager, I grew up watching, you know, Caroline Quentin and, and Martin Clunes and Neil Morrissey and, you know, uh, and it was, um, yeah, she's very much part of my sort of um, viewing experience as a child. So, but yeah, she's great. You know, she's just like any other person. She's, yeah, she's amazing. She's very committed to the work. And like we all were, we're all very committed to the work and we're all very passionate about the jobs that we're doing. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and Charlie, I'll, I'll ask you about uh, Papa because I know obviously uh, you shot so many sort of scenes alongside him. I mean, he is becoming one of the kind of really sort of great kind of sort of leading men at the moment in, in sort of in British TV and, and film. I mean, uh, how was it like sort of collaborating so closely with him on this? And 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 because I guess yeah, you guys share some sort of yeah, quite a, some quite sort of good, intense, and sort of emotional scenes, I suppose. Yeah, he's just the best guy ever. It's sort of that simple. Um, I wish I could make a, a joke and be like, oh, it's a nightmare. He's such an arsehole, but he's complete heaven. He's a joy to work with. He um, is was on set basically every day, as far as I know, or, or set adjacent. He worked pretty much the entire shoot with um, with, with quite little break. And um, every day he'd come in and just set the tone of, um, we're all here to do like such an exciting job and isn't it a privilege and um, he was a very he's a really generous guy to work with and um, uh, just a, a very fun and exciting collaborator and a, just a, a fantastic actor it was it was great and even though we do have a lot of intense scenes and um, yeah uh, a lot of the a lot of the work was at times sort of like quite troubled or get get getting to sort of darker territories. Um, there was always a good precedent set of uh, when the camera stops rolling, we are drinking tea and talking about what we're going to do at the weekend. And there's never a sort of like take it away from set with you. And um, yeah, he's. Uh, I think we all just think he's great. He's a cool dude. Only tea. I was hoping because everyone on this set, you're all kind of sort of the same age. I thought there'd be a few drinks after work every now and then. It was the really tricky thing. We were, we were lockdown. filming in lockdown. We in lockdown. So course, no, yeah. there was no life whatsoever. I mean, we went, we went to, um, we went to Prague for some of the shoes. Some of us went to Prague, and I didn't see any of Prague at all, apart from the you know the film set locations. But because they were in a really strict lockdown, so um, I mean, Papa and I shared a. Um, Shared, we, we were actually next to each other in Prague in the hotel and we shared a balcony. We had a sort of a, a glass panel separating us, but we bonded really well actually over the course of that sort of 10 days. <laughs> we were just talking to each other over the balcony and we weren't allowed to go anywhere else because they had such a strict lockdown. So yeah, it's one, wonderful really. You didn't get to have one of those sort of famous pilsners where the beer goes halfway up and the rest is just foam. Oh. <laughs> um, Angela, I was going to ask you about plans for kind of opening night. When you're, I mean, obviously, you know, you've been in a sort of a few shows now, but when when you do get the kind of the first episode airing or the launch date of, of, of something, do you get all the family now? You probably couldn't a couple of years ago of lockdown, but now can you get all the family around or do you all find, sort of find a way to, to watch it somehow? Yeah, I, well, I, I don't know if I'm alone in this, but I'm quite painful to watch myself around for the first time I see it. Um, there's a lot of commentating, a lot of face pulling, a lot of cringing, a lot of swearing. Um, but yeah, I think I think I will gather with some friends to to sort of celebrate the the opening night on Thursday because it's it's a moment. It's something that 
you know, we, we made over a year ago and I think there's been a high amount of anticipation for this one. So, yeah. Have you noticed sort of up, an upturn in kind of sort of scripts and characters and good roles and stuff in, in TV at the moment? Because it does feel, because there's so many different um, kind of streaming sites and stuff. I think because I've just from a sort of journalistic perspective, I seem to be covering such a, an array of stuff sort of every week. It does feel like there's a lot out there at the moment. Is that something you've noticed from, from the inside of the industry? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just deep. I think all three of us have, were, were actors when there was just channels one to five, Sky, and then the stuff in America that felt like it was kind of over there, but not that reachable. And now it's just, I mean, there's so many platforms. There's new ones that you hear about all the time and you, you know, there's like Peacock and things like that. And you're like, where did they come from? It's it's never ending. So and it, yeah, the and material- the drama, And the, drama, the, the, the quality of filmmaking is is really quite incredible. And I, I, you know, I'm not, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I'm, when I'm saying that actually I, I feel like we're sort of living in the golden age of TV. And, you know, like what you say, Angela, it's like, you know, when we were growing up, when I was training at drama school, you know, I wanted to work at the RSC, I wanted to work at the National Theatre, I wanted to work at the Royal Court. Um, they, they were the sort of like, um, they, they were the sort of the goals and the ambitions. And, and now we have this whole other avenue of quality um, storytelling, um, which is available to us, which is, um, which is wonderful for the industry and wonderful for actors and, and everyone associated with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it used to feel like when I was growing up, there was TV actors and movie actors. And now, I mean, I just watched a series last week where Jeff Bridges is the lead. I mean, that wouldn't have happened 20 years ago. But he just, you know, so that is great. But my very final question, I'll come to you, Charlie, because I started with you, so I'll end with you. But do you think when you're um, making sort of TV series, not just the Lazarus Project, just sort of in general, do you think about the characters and where they could go beyond first seasons? Or do you always just like to focus on, on the here and now? Do you always just like, to, is it one of those things where you don't think far ahead? Because I guess there is always that prospect isn't there when you take on a series that you could be five there could be five series down the line or do you just focus on yeah on what's to come I think probably you should just focus on what's in front of you and what you know for sure is is going to happen and and where where you can take it practically but I think it's very difficult not to think about a much wider world when you're when you're preparing for your character anyway you think about lots of backstory and I think that sometimes you can't help but think about sort of like future story as well and I think when you're, if you're just sort of thinking about your own life, you tend to sort of think, I wonder what I'm going to do next week. I wonder what next year will bring. And it's very easy to do that with your character as well. And um, yeah, uh, I think with a show, particularly with a show like this, that's so enormous and there's so much scope for really anything to happen, it's quite hard not to sort of be like, what on earth could happen? And will anything interesting happen further? Um, and if, if it does, if anything further does happen, I think it will be pretty mad and brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Well, fingers crossed there will be more to come. Well, thank you so much for your time to everyone and best of luck with the release of the show. Maybe we will catch up on season two, who knows, one day. Thank you so much, Stefan. Cheers. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Cheers. Yeah, bye. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!